Okay, so what I have here is our Laser Lux G7 from Road Vista. You might say, what are those suction cups? They're not suction cups, they're vacuum cups. And uh, the large vacuum cup holds about 175 pounds of weight all by itself. The small one's 75. We have the only portable mounting system for a mobile unit uh, in the world. And we've never had one of these fail, fall off. We've had people get in some accidents, but they just don't let go. And so we're pretty secure with it there. What this unit is doing, you can see that uh, maybe on the top of it, it's kind of lowered itself down. It goes into position and then it has actuated motors that are gonna keep it in 30 meter geometry, no matter what happens on that roadway or the height of the vehicle. So you can be sure you're always getting an accurate reading uh, on the retroflectometer of how bright that line is. So what this is doing is it's scanning the pavement over 400 times per second and then we have it usually set up to average at about a tenth of a mile and crunching that data and being able to tell you here's what we're seeing every tenth mile and when you're driving at freeway speed it's giving you a data point about every two inches. So it's like taking a movie of your line it's it's really the closest thing to the way a human sees that line in accuracy one of the other things that it does is it will pick up and read it will it will assess and it will count all of your retroflective pavement markers and catalogs those into a separate file with gps positioning so with this you do get a, a gps file that is on google mapping and you can see on a color-coded route based on how many millicandelas you've set it up for, let's say from your failure lines, which we would probably code as red, and you give it some different intervals in between, yellow or orange or green for passing, and then blue for brand new and, and excellent. And so you can see visually on the map and as you drive, uh, you probably can't see my screen here, but it's showing you the line that I'm reading right now in the parking lot. So you get that KML file for Google mapping. You also get spreadsheet files, and you get shape files for your GIS and video files. So that's kind of what this one does. It gives you a lot of information. It's going to tell you the retroreflective stripe width while you're driving. So let's say you put down six inches of paint. It's going to tell you what the bead spread looks like. It might say, no, I see four and a half inches. And so it can really help you to know if you've got some wear on your edges or you've got a bead gun issue things like that and so it will give you quite a bit of information to be able to do maintenance and really set up a maintenance ah! program and maybe not stripe what well, doesn't need to be striped so you can save money on that as well i want to open it up to you guys for any questions that you have about this unit or what it's doing or what it's reading anyone Yes. Is it looking down or is it looking forward? It's looking forward. Okay. So it th it's catching about just before the end of that that temporary tape stripe that I put out. It's right about 20 feet in front of the unit. So we have this is our main unit. It's a it's a standard retro laser. We also make a unit that we add two more lasers to it that will read the color on the nighttime value against ASTM uh, specs. And we have one more unit that you can put an infrared laser on, and it reads the line the way that uh, automated cars read the line. So you have human vision and machine vision in one. And the thing that's important about that is, we talk about self-driving cars, that's, that's a whole class by itself. There's not a lot of autopilot cars, but there are a lot of cars that have lane keeping abilities. And so that's why the stripes are important, because it's gotta see those lines or it's going to get out of whack and, and we've done a lot of testing with this on a Tesla and we know what kinds of lines when they go away what happens and uh, with the Tesla it's kind of it gets a little bit wild because if it loses a line it finds the next line and tries to center you up so it will pull you out and you got to get control of it and get it back where you want it and so it's kind of a fun ride any other questions Yes. Can you like 
on that shape file or the click on that line and grab it Yes, so you'll be able to do that. The, the uh, video files that come with it are key to all of the data as well. Yeah, so all of your data is all overlapping on each other and you can find everything really easily across between your mapping, your spreadsheet, your shape file, and your video files. The other thing about this is inside the unit in the back, we've got a, a very small USB drive that will hold up to 100 hours of video and all the data on it and it's instantly processed so as soon as you park your vehicle you pull that drive and everything's ready you have no processing time you don't have anything that goes to the cloud that you have to pay a subscription for to get your own information it's all in your hands all the time any other questions all right that's a good question. So in some states they require to have two people, one driver and one just manning the unit. Uh, in the states where they don't require that, with a little bit of work with it, um, you can do it at one person operation, especially on the interstates. Because you can preset, you can, you can do all of your attributes, the type of line, type of payment, the type of B package, any kind of variable like that and add it in and you get those loaded up and all you have to do is hit the target to start reading and you just drive straight and uh, you watch the screen to make sure you're driving over a line and it'll show you that you're on a, on a market. I would say for city routes it's better with two people because you'll be doing on here you can do lane changes or striping type change so if you've got turn lanes or you're going from a double to a, a solid skip, you know, right or left side, and you want to collect that, that really takes two people to do it. I'll stick the set up to switch sides of the car doing the lane on that side of the edge line. Yeah. Uh, how, how fast it takes to set up on top of the edge. Yeah, so he asked how, how long it takes to set this up and especially to move it from one side to the other. So, for example, I, I do these on rent cars every week. And so if I'm on a brand new car that I haven't done anything on, it takes me about a half hour to get it set up. Once I have it in this position, uh, as I did today, I take it off in one piece with all the vacuum cups still installed. And putting it back on took me about five minutes to get it hooked up, cabled up. It also has its own calibration block that sits on the front of the unit, which is different than any other unit in the world. It takes less than about 30 seconds to calibrate it. And then because of the automated motors on it that keep it in 30 meter geometry, I don't ever have to calibrate again that day. Nobody's asked how much it costs, so I'll tell you. How much it? Thank you. The standard single laser unit is $86,000. The one with color lasers is uh, $118,000. And then the infrared laser is ninety-six. dollars And right now the infrared laser is used mostly by uh, research groups. Say that again? How much would impact that day? Like a rock or a piece of debris in the rain? Yeah, it, it can take a pretty good hit. Um, we, we ran it a couple years ago, 30 miles out of town on a cross-country route and got hit with a retread, you know, that hit the front and dragged underneath it and laid, made us some nice rubber, you know, marks all over it, but it was fine. We got off, recalibrated, made sure everything was good. Yeah, so they get scuffed on the bottom a little bit, you know, uh, but, but they'll take a, a pretty good hit. Oh, one other thing I should tell you, really important. So it has its own Wi-Fi that it's generating. So right now, the tablet that I have set up, it's picking up the Wi-Fi signal from the LLG 7, and then I dial up my browser. So it doesn't matter if I'm using Google Chrome or Firefox or Safari. All I do is put in the browser address, and this is the screen that I get. And so it's an independent onboard Wi-Fi. You don't ever have to worry about having cell towers or things like that. 
Uh, I was out here earlier when I first got it set up, I was running it on my phone. So really anything that picks up Wi-Fi, you can use as a controller. No, there's no subscriptions involved in it at all. Software updates uh, to the system, they come with it. It's, it's free and just part of uh, using the system. And they all come with the Surface Pro, whatever the next generation, newest generation of Surface Pro we include, but you can use really anything you want to to control it. Can you mount one on either side? Yes, great question. Thanks for asking that. Yeah, so you can set it up as a tandem unit, have one on either side, and then what we do is you get a split screen and you run both of them off of one screen. And in fact, we did a cross-country route like that with one on either side. Uh, that one wasn't cross-country, I'm sorry. It was a turnpike route from Philadelphia to just north of Chicago. And uh, so we took the readings on either side. Also, this is the only red reflectometer made in the USA and fully serviced in the US. <laughs> All right, anything else? I appreciate you all taking a look and stand, come in and asking questions. Uh, please feel free to come up close, take a look at the screen and see what it's reading. Uh, there's a lot of data that it's putting out all the time. All right, thank you everybody. We're gonna be moving.